We thank you, Father, that you said heaven and earth will pass away. But your word will never pass away, never fail. So, Lord, I thank you this morning that as I decrease, you'll increase. I pray less of me and more of you, none of me and all of you. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Father, those things that you would have me to say to these, your sheep. I thank you, Lord, we're going to leave here better than what we came in. Hallelujah. I think the joy of the Lord is increasing even as I'm speaking right now. Father, you said you sent your word and it healed them. So, Lord, even as the word goes forth, healing power will manifest. Joy will replace despair. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Your word cannot fail. So as we, as we study your word this morning, help us to be encouraged in the face of all trouble, to be full of joy when we're living in the midst of misery. Demonstrate through your power how that greater one really lives on the inside of us. And Lord, we'll rejoice and we'll give you the praise. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray and let all that agree shout amen. amen. Well, give another good looking person a big old hug. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you, how y'all liking the new time? Oh, yeah, that's a good thing, man. We, so, you know, that's the way it is. Start at 8, we end at 9.30. First service, start, second service starts at 10, end at when? At 12, amen? So, you know, you, now you can tell your friends, we're going to be in at 10 or out at 12 or whatever the case may be, because that's what it's going to be, amen? All right, so we're learning how to live the grace life. Look at your neighbor and say, we're learning how to live this thing. <laughs> it's not enough for you and I to only acquire knowledge. Knowledge is good. But the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, yeah, I thought it was something sound weird. I'm like, what that big old thing walking behind me? It was him. Man. <laughs> <laughs> the um, yeah, so we good? Okay, so I want you to open your Bibles. Well, where do I want to get started? My shekotobosata. Where did I start last service? Second Timothy. Yeah, turn to Second Timothy, chapter three. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at your neighbor and say, now we're learning how to live. Now, there's two, there's, there's, a, there's several things that can happen when you come to church. You, you can get informed, you can get uh, inspired, or you can get empowered. To be, to be inspired means somebody tell you something that's good and exciting, you get excited over it, but you don't have a clue how to do it. Informed is, well, now you know what's wrong, but you still don't know how to get out of it or what to do with it. But when you're empowered by the Word of God, you, you now become free. Even if your present life circumstances in the natural hadn't changed at all, what you know that God has the ability to do through his word can change your outlook on things. Amen. It changes your perspective. I mean, just, some, just knowing that, that what God said he can do. Amen. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. What that means, you can trust God. You can trust his word. But now if you don't know the word, it's going to be very hard to trust it. Amen. Amen. Especially during hard times, challenging times. So I want to start in 2 Timothy chapter 3 so that you can see what 
what the Word of God says times during the last times are going to be like. And we're in the last days. And I want, to, I want you to see if you can identify with whether the Word of God is accurate or not, okay? Because sometimes in order for us to really grasp what God wants us to receive from Him, we have to look at what we can see and say, okay, that's true. People are acting that way. People are talking that way. They are behaving that way. But the Bible gives us answers. It's not about just gaining more knowledge. It's having revelation of that knowledge so that you'll be empowered to get the results God wants you to get. Amen? Amen. All right. So what I want to do right now is show you the problem. Then I'm going to transition and show you God's answer to all of these problems because they exist. But you, you need to see it. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And I'm going to read from the Amplified. And, and I think this is, is important because <clears throat> this is the Apostle Paul teaching Pastor Timothy advising him on what to look out for, what to expect, what behavior people are going to display in, in this dispensation. These are the things, Timothy, Paul is telling him, that, that's going to happen. This is the way people are going to be behaving. And I want you to see if you can identify with what's true for Timothy is true for us today. Okay? All right. This is the problem. He said, but understand this, that in the last days <coughs> will come, set in, perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. So now, is that true? Yes. Uh, are we in a time where people are dealing with stuff that's hard? I mean, there's great stress. There's things that our young people are dealing with on a daily basis that many of us never had to consider. Amen. Going to school today, high school, middle school, it's an adventure, but not an adventure won't you looking forward to. There was trouble when we went to school, but not the kind of trouble they have today. Are, are, are you in agreement with me? I mean, there are great stresses. I mean, if you own a business, for instance, and you have employees, there's great stress on business owners just to try to provide insurance to cover their employees. Great stress is changing all the time. This church, we've changed insurance providers three times in the last four years. Why? Because the rules keep changing. Without understanding God's power and God's grace, that could be great stress. Are, are you with me? Amen. Now, he said, this is going to happen. Then he goes to verse 2 and he says, For people will be lovers of self, utterly self-centered, lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth. They'll do anything to get it. That's what that means. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll cheat their own mama, their brother, whoever, just to get it. Are, are we there yet? Yes, sir. He said, this is what's going to happen. Now remember, this is Paul talking to Timothy so that he can prepare Timothy to prepare the people to overcome. Because anytime God talks about a problem, keep listening, because he's going to let you know where the victory is and where you can overcome. Amen? Amen. He says, so people are going to be like this. Greedy desire for wealth, proud, arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful. No matter what you do for them, it ain't enough. Unholy and profane. He said they will, they will be without natural human affection, callous, inhuman. People doing stuff to themselves and to other people, you, wouldn't, you couldn't even imagine. No way. You, they did what? Go 
come on, you, you, you're kidding. No, that's real. Inhuman. <clears throat> he said, relentless. Admitting of no truce or appeasement. Even when they caught on video. That ain't me. No, no dude, that's you. Deny, 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 deny. No, no, that's you, dude. And then, and then now, people do stuff today, and they're so blinded because of the season we're in. They're so blinded by how corrupt the behavior is, they film themselves. We're there. I mean, young people filming themselves committing fornication and adultery and, and then, you know, thinking they ain't going to never show it. I ain't going to show it. No, this just for us. Then y'all break up and it's on the internet. I guess they lied, huh? <laughs> you know, liars do lie yes, every now and then. They ain't got to tell a whole bunch of lies, but just one lie can mess you up. Yeah. Right? That's not an accident. We're, we're, not, we're not there today by accident, but God's got an answer. All right, watch this now. He said, so they will be without natural human affection, callous, inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truths or appeasement. You know, people thinking they don't need anybody else. They don't need to make up with anybody. They don't need to say, I'm sorry. You know, how do I offend you if I offended you? Look, let's just, let's just, let's just be in love with each other. Look, if I did you wrong, I'm sorry. That was not my intention. Or if it was my intention, please forgive me. I was stupid back then. I've gotten some wisdom now. Amen. Amen. I need you. Are you seeing? Are you seeing what I'm saying? And the opposite of that is, and here's where selfishness comes in. Most of you think, okay, you offended them. They offended you. You don't need them. Bump them. I don't need them. I'll just do life by myself. You can't. You can't live life by yourself. You cannot. Especially not live the grace life by yourself. You know, people that think they're going to bless themselves so they can keep blessing themselves so they'll never need to be blessed by anybody else end up without any blessings. You can't bless yourself. And even if you did, who are you going to tell? <laughs> and how, what kind of life is it if you don't have nobody to enjoy the blessing with? Everybody you know don't want to admit they know you. That's a bad place to end up in, amen? No friends, zero friends. Nobody likes you, even your mom and daddy. How'd you end up over there? Selfishness. Selfishness. Are you still with me? Yes. Look at this. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate, Loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled, fierce, haters of good. Now, there's people that don't do good, and then there's people that hate good. Haters of good are those people that refused to do good and then hated those that were trying to tell them to do good. You, you, just, you just don't want to have nothing to do with what's right. I like what Brother Copeland said, do what's right, do it because it's right, do it right. What's wrong with that? Selfish people can't live like that. Look at what he says. Yo, oh boy. They will be treacherous. Treacherous. Betrayers. Think of the decisions some people make relative to their own children, their own family members, let alone friends and other people. Everything is for their advantage. 
they'll walk with you till it's no longer to their benefit to keep walking with you. Betrayers. Rash. Inflated with self-conceit. All right, now here's what it all leads to. This is a progression. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. In other words, you know, right now today, these are, these are facts. You take the top 100, top Fortune 100 companies in America, you know, your, your Walmart, Microsoft, Boeing, um, it's a whole bunch of them. Just pick one, pick three. Add all of their revenue together, and it's not as much as the porn industry. The porn industry makes more money by itself than, the three, than any three top 100 companies you want to put together and add their revenue up. Why? Sensual pleasures. It, it, it's, it's a major distraction. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. People are consumed by that desire. Are you listening to me? And then the next one, vain amusement. I'm not talking about folk down the street around the corner. I'm talking to you sitting right here. Notice people have, they'll spend hours watching pornography on, 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 on a computer, but only willing to give God an hour in church. Up all night. Are you listening? Paul was telling Timothy, Timothy, these are the things that you as a pastor are going to have to help people be delivered from so they can accomplish the will of God and live the grace life. This is, this is Paul instructing Timothy, who's a pastor. So these are situations happening in the, to the church, in the church. Are you with me? We ain't got to the trouble in the world yet. They don't stand a chance. They don't, know, they don't even know what's going on. I'm talking to folk that ought to know. And, and, and the good thing about you and I, we do have hope. The Bible says that's what it means to be a Christian, is, is that you have hope. To be lost means you're in the world without hope. <clears throat> he says, vain amusement. Think about this. People have time, they, they find time, and they find money to go visit the fat rat. You call him a mouse. Disney, when you get as big as Disney is, that's not, that's not a mouse. That's a rat. Vain amusement, why, why is that? You know, people will find time to do the things that they think are gonna relieve the stress. When in reality, it produces more stress. Because if you go to Disney broke, anybody ever, don't raise your hand. <laughs> you ever been to Disney broke? You ain't having no fun because of all the stuff you want to do that you can't do, that you didn't even know was available to do. Walking through the park with your kids. Mama, can we eat that? No, we can't eat nothing. I got a sandwich for you in this bag over here. <laughs> <laughs> eat that sandwich. <laughs> Great stress. You had just enough money to get in the park. I saw a guy last night, man. I mean, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking. Great stress. Everybody said great stress. Great stress. This guy had the movies with his, his, I don't know if his wife or some person, but Let's say it's his wife, a man, wife, and about three kids. And, uh, you know, instead of, you know, you, you can, they got this deal that if you buy a large bag of popcorn, yes, sir. Yes, sir. right, yes, sir. you can get free refills. That's right. I'm going to show you great stress. 
my man, my man had, <laughs> my man had these artificial bags shaped. They would look like cardboard boxes. He pulled them out and unfolded them, and they made like a little bag. And he had his kids lined up around the corner pouring, pouring the popcorn into them, and then sent one of the kids back to the counter to get a refill. I'm thinking that's stress on the little kid. <laughs> Why don't you take your grown tail back around there and deceive people? This kid, you know, you understand what I'm saying? This is why I'm just standing back looking at the situation going. I wanted to go buy him some popcorn myself. Man, let me, I'm going to buy all y'all a big bag of popcorn. Eat what you want, throw the rest away. It's just popcorn, man. Putting that stress on that little kid. He got a guy eat. You understand what I'm saying? I'm looking at the little boy's face, and he didn't want to do it. <laughs> he got to go back to the counter. You know, wonder, wonder if they know I just came around here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start, I was going to go help, and then the Lord said, don't you do that. Because here's what, what the Lord showed me. The pride in that father would have thought I was, he would have thought I was trying to make him look bad. Hey, I couldn't even help him. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I wanted to help, but I couldn't even help him because of his pride. But he didn't have enough pride to embarrass his little kid. You understand what I'm saying? That's great stress. He can't even enjoy the movie, man. It's, I went to AMC. You ever been to AMC over here? Yeah. It's got so bad. I'm telling you what people do. They sneak the kids in. And, and so what they do is they sneak them in, and then they could, you know, because they had the names of what the movie was showing right above the door, they covered up all the names. So you don't know where to go unless they tell you. Because the movie theater was losing so much money because of people slipping in. They got to hire people to check tickets. That's great stress. It's something wrong. What's wrong? Folks don't know how to live. You don't know how to live. God's trying to show you a way to live, but you, 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 you've got other information that's competing with God's information. So look, look. He says... For although, why is this now? He's talking to Christians. For although they holy form of piety, true religion. Oh boy. <laughs> Great stress for the mother. <laughs> I, ain't never, I ain't never seen a mother run with a baby that fast, boy. If the Bucks need a running back, they ought to check with her, man. She, she was moving. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. That's why we got Children's Church, and they'll take care of all that. Amen? All right. <laughs> but look at this next verse. For although they hold a form of piety, true religion, why well, says now, here's why they had great stress. This is church folk. This is church folk. Paul is talking to Timothy about the folks he got to minister to so they can gain deliverance. He said they have a form of religion. <clears throat> but look at the problem. They deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. What is the power of our religion, which we call a relationship? It is grace. The power of grace is the favor of God. Another definition, a more accurate definition of grace is it is the unmerited favor of God. Grace and favor go together. When you're living the grace life, then the favor of God surrounds you like a shield. Hallelujah. Favor is preferential treatment. Favor gives you and I the advantage in life. Say, I have the advantage in life. I'm not stressed out in life. I have an advantage in life. 
No, not because I did something and deserve it or earned it, but because of God's goodness. I mean, we say that God is good. See, that, that's a, a little quote. <laughs> God is good all the time, all the time. You liar, you don't believe that. Because if you believe that, you wouldn't be all stressed out. Amen. It's amazing how we can so quickly turn a truth into a, to a cliche. God is my source then don't you ever complain about being broke. Because maybe God's got a currency that he wants to use that's not limited to the economy of the United States of America. You know that the economy of the grace life is favor. Say that. The economy of the grace life is favor. Why are you trigger, trying to figure out how to pay for something? God's saying, let me handle it. And, and maybe you don't need to pay anything at all. And if you do, I'll cover it for you. He said, they deny and reject and are strangers. That's, that's bad. You are a Christian and you, you are a stranger to the power of what makes a Christian a Christian. Still operating with wisdom from the world. Still trying to work it out. Baby need a new pair of shoes, work it out. <laughs> Got a light bill due, work it out. You know, I don't know all that, them, them old songs like that. But you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. How many, how, what, what are you trying to work out right now that you need to cast that care upon the Lord? and trust that he's already worked it out. What is it? I don't know what it is. You know what it is. What are you trying to fix? No, not what, what, what thing, what person you trying to fix that only God can fix. And that's if they desire to be fixed. I've had my last days of challenge with people <laughs> months ago. I've been set free from folk. Amen. You know what? And when I got set free from people, I got set free from stress. Amen. Well, I wonder if they're getting it. You know what? I don't wonder at all anymore. Not my job. I'm going to love you either way. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. When, when you have the agape love of God, you're going to love a person whether they're on top or whether they jacked up. Because my love for you should not be based on your present condition. Are you with me here? Your love for someone should not be based on how they treat you or what they can do for you or what you can do for them. That's all works. <clears throat> he said, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Look at this, their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people, turn away from them. He said, he said now, you've got to mark and understand who these people are that have this counter, that are preaching this counterfeit gospel, which produces the wrong results in our lives. Now, he told him about all this bad stuff that's happening with people, right? He also told Timothy, he said, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of what? Power and love and of a sound mind. So go to Psalms 1, and I want you to see how we as a church and you as an individual and your family and your business and your finances and your health has been, I want to use the word, infected by what the world thinks, feels, and has decide, decided. Because god got a better plan for you. And his plan right now is for you and I 
to live this grace life. I'm living it. I'm living it in full color. Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3. Listen to this. Uh, one through one, yeah, 1 through 4. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So you want to be blessed? Stop following. Walking in means you, you're, you've activated the counsel. You might, you might hear the counsel of an ungodly person, but that, that's not going to affect your life until you act on that counsel. He said, walking in it, walking in the counsel of the ungodly. He said, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So if I want to live this blessed life, then I, I got to make sure I'm not walking in or acting out on the counsel of ungodly people. Everybody understand that? Amen. He says, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. So I, I got to make sure I don't have this negative mouth. Well, think about it. The Bible says the power of life and death is where? In the tongue. In the tongue. <laughs> so how, how you talking? If we really want to help people live this grace life, we need to examine how they're talking. Because what you're saying, it, every word is a seed. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Amen? Now, when you plant negativity, guess what it takes to keep it going and get it growing? It, it, it takes fear, worry, and unbelief. Every negative, negative th thought needs fear, worry, and unbelief in order to flourish. When you plant the word of God, you need faith, hope, love, confidence in God to keep it growing. See, you, you take the promises of God and you and I, we have a choice. God said, I place before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your children may live, right? So not only does, does your negative words affect your life presently, but it's going to jack up the future of your children and your grandchildren's life. Think about, think about what selfish grandparents say. I got mine, or parents, I got mine, you get yours. Ain't nobody help me. Okay, I don't know why they didn't help you. Somebody should have helped you. I'm um, looking at you now, you, you done missed some help. We all need help. And, and then the truth of the matter is, nobody's gotten to where they are without somebody's love and help. Am I right? But you know what happens? After a while, life done whooped your butt so much, you so bitter and angry, you don't want to help nobody. And that's why you're so negative. Negative seed produce negative harvest. Well, you're going to be just, just positive all the time. I'm trying my best to be positive all the time, Amen. every day. I want to see the good in everything because that's what agape love is. I mean, read, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love speaking no ill. Yeah, but pastor, you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, God know what you did to somebody else. Right, which should be more, which you should be thinking about more than what you did to that person. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? All right, all right. <clears throat> he said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Are you, is, is, are you getting delight from the word? And in his law, or his word, does he meditate day and night? Look at it. If you do that, he said, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Listen to this in the Amplified. Are oh, you ready for this? Yes, Look at neighbor say, you need to strap yourself in for this. This is good stuff. Man. <laughs> I'm telling you, bless God, it'll change your life. It'll change your perspective on life forever. Bless, happy, fortunate, 
prosperous and enviable. Now, all of us want that. We all want to be blessed. Blessed means, according to Amplified, to be happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable. Other words, other folk look at you and want to be you or live your life or have, or have what's modeled in your life happening in their life. Are, are you listening? Now, not because you did it. We, we ain't talking about what you do, and you're going to see this in a minute, but what we're talking about what God does through you. Listen, he says, is the man who walks and lives, watch this, not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes. Every decision that you or I have ever made based on counsel of ungodly people creates an Ishmael. And an Ishmael in your life creates conflict in your life between the will of God and the will of man. They're fighting in, in, in the Middle East right now today because Abram heard God. God told him that I'm, you're going to bear a son. His name is Isaac, and he's going to come out of Sarah. That was the will of God. After a little time elapsed and they got impatient, Sarah decided maybe, maybe what God meant was you should go in and, and sleep with my handmaiden, what is it, Hannah? Hagar. 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 And, and so old boy did. <laughs> right? Yeah. He heard what God said. And he knew when God spoke that word to him that was going to produce the blessing for him, that was going to produce through his favor because he needed the favor of God to impact his physical body and his wife's physical body because she was barren and he was old. Right? So when it looked like it wasn't going to work, they created an Ishmael. So I'm saying to you, how many of you, because of a lack of patience, you created an Ishmael? Well, you know what God said, but it, it just don't look like God going to keep his word. No, God cannot lie. Are you listening? So that Ishmael begins to compete with the Isaac, which is the will of God. The plan of man, plan of this culture, competes with the plan of God. He says, following their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stand submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk. It's amazing to me how readily and quickly Save folks will accept the advice of sinners and argue with counsel from God. You know why? There's no resistance when you're going the wrong way. You, you ever watch you, you, you watch the NBA basketball game? You ever seen somebody get confused? It don't happen that often, but it has happened where a, a player will go and score in the wrong bucket. Don't nobody care. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to block his shot or impede his access to the wrong goal. Right? Same thing with football. You, you pick up a fumble and get disoriented and run the wrong way. Ain't nobody trying to tackle you. <laughs> run, boy, run. <laughs> Same thing in life. As long as you're going the wrong way, you're going to face very little resistance from the enemy. But when you make a decision to obey the counsel of the living God and live this grace life, oh, you're going to face all kind of resistance. Because he know once you taste and see how good this life is. You ain't never going back to that life. Are oh, you listening to me? He know that. 
And it's not like you get counsel from the world once and he shut it down. No, baby, he bombarding you every day. Yeah, I know what God said, but well, you know, if God, if God really wanted you to be married, you'd be married by now. If God really wanted you to have a husband, have a wife, it did it happen by now. On who timetable are you working with? Listen to this, folks. Why is this now? This is good. Oh, boy. All right. Verse 2 in the Amplified. But his delight, say my delight. My delight. Look at this. And desire are in the law of the Lord or the word of God. So where, where's your desires and delight rooted in? The Bible says in the book of Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be what? Added unto you. He says, but his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord and on his law or the word, the precepts, watch this, the instructions, the teachings of God, not the counsel of the world, the teachings of God, he habitually meditates, ponders, and studies by day and by night. So when the Apostle Paul, going back to Timothy, when the Apostle Paul showed Timothy all these problems, the next verse, uh, further down in the passage, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the way you and I are to deal with all the great stresses and challenges is to study the word. Not, not so we can just know it, but so we can get a revelation of it and live it. Amen. Look at the next verse. <clears throat> and he or she shall be like a tree firmly planted and tended its fruit uh, tended by the streams of water ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. Now, now here's, here's the problem. Doubt fear, doubt, fear, and unbelief uproots the seed. That's right. The Bible says in another place that the word of God is incorruptible seed, right? right? Yes, that means once you get the word of God, you hear that word, you receive that word, it's planted in you. It is incorruptible. There is no force, nothing in the earth realm, in the spirit realm that can uproot that word. It can't be corrupted once it's been planted in righteous soil. You're righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Are you listening? Not, not because of your acts, your good works, your good deeds, but you're righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Once this word, the promise of God, has been planted, nothing external, no angel can stop the harvest from coming forth that the DNA of that seed said it would produce. Wow. Well, well, well how come then, Pastor? How come people having these, they, they're not bearing any fruit? Why? Uh, been in church all the time. There ain't, ain't nothing happening because they keep digging up the seed and planting it somewhere else. What if you got it in good ground, but because of a lack of patience, you dig it up and you put it in some other ground? The potential of its continued growth has now been disturbed. Now, why did you dig it up? That's the, re that's the more important thing. You digged it up because of fear, doubt, and unbelief. Well, it don't look like it's working. Let's go do something else. Go back to Abraham and Sarah. They, they knew exactly what God said. But yet, after a period of time had elapsed, they began to doubt. Or they began to reason with what God said. Maybe... He's going to do it this way and not that way. That's reasoning. Are you listening to me? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe God going to 
to it. No, you know exactly what God said. And, and if you don't know, then you need to ask him. The Bible said, let him that lack wisdom ask who? Who gives it liberally and upbraided not. Meaning he gives you the answer without conditions. You don't have to qualify for God to give you the right answer. You qualified because of the blood of Jesus. You have access to every answer, to every problem and challenge that could produce great stress in your life because of Jesus, not because of you. Amen. But if you don't go to him, he said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you and what? And learn some stuff. God said, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Is what we don't know. <gasps> you sit all, all by yourself, have a big old pity party. And if you're not careful, you start inviting people to your party. Yeah. Now you got agreement with your pity party. <laughs> the worst thing you can do is start to doubt God and then find another fool to agree with you. That's the worst thing you can do to yourself. Absolute worst. Oh, no, no, Pastor, that's, that can't happen. It happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Two fools agreed together to do something totally opposite. Husband and wife, they came in agreement to do something totally opposite what the Holy Spirit had empowered them to do. Now, their problem was over money. I ain't got time to talk about that. <laughs> Look at this. I'm saying that because sometimes people think, well, we're in agreement. Well, you could agree on the wrong thing and jack your whole life up. Right? Let go rob a bank because we need some money. Well, you need some money. The bank has money, but I don't agree that that's the right way for you to get it. Somebody that agree with you on something wrong is not, I mean, that's the worst kind of person you connect yourself with. Amen. Especially if they're, quote, believer. Oh, that's good, Lord. I'm going to keep that one to myself. He said now, but his delight and desire in the law of the Lord. Two things. You have to have a delight for it and a desire. Amen. Two different things. A delight and a desire. Man, I want this word. I got to have this word. There's nothing more precious to me than this word. I can't go days without the word. I, I have a delight in the word. I love the word. Look at, look at this now. But his delight and desire in the law of the Lord and in his law, the precepts, the instructions, teachings of God, he habitually meditates, ponders and studies by day and by night. And look at, look at what happened. And, and he shall be like a tree firmly planted and tended by the streams of water. Every time you see water, it represents the word of God. Amen? Streams of water, streams of word. Not a little dab of do you. It's streaming. The word of God is streaming into your spirit, streaming through your soul, streaming through your mind. It's doing two things. It's washing away the doubt, fear, and unbelief, and it's also cleansing and preparing you to receive the purity of the power of that word. It's streaming. I mean, when you want to wash something in your sink, do you turn the faucet on a little bit, or you put it on as much force as it got, and you just let it run? Are, are you with me here? We, we as a church, as believers, we say we believe the word of God, but the word of God is more like a trickle. And it's trying to wash away doubt, fear, and unbelief that's like a, a, a force, like an ocean. You're getting bombarded every day with doubt and unbelief. Yeah, right. Temptations, right? Right? What, 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 is, what are you doing that, that now notice, you can't, you can't produce the power, but you can connect with the power and let it flow. Stay connected, and it'll keep flowing. Right? We don't produce power. 
in our homes, we just plug something in. Florida Power keeps it flowing. They produce it somewhere else. Favor is that power. Lord, I don't know what to do. He said, yeah, but I do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. What did he promise you? He said, I'm going to give you direction in the midst of the trouble. But you got to stay planted. Can't be all over the place. Doubt, fear, and unbelief moves you all over the place. It moves you through your emotions. You feel good. You think everything is good. That's not necessarily true. Isn't that right? It look good. It must be good. No. Not, not necessarily so. I love this last part. Ready to bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not fade or wither. Look at this. And everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. Well, what is that active force? Last verse. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The Apostle Paul was facing a tremendous challenge. And we'll probably pick up on this on Wednesday. Are you with me here today? Yes. So I don't care about all the trouble in the world. I'm not a part of that. Amen? Amen. Greater is he that is where? Amen. So now, if the greater one's on the inside of you, then, then you ain't got to make a whole lot of noise to have him activated in your life. Just agree. You know how I used to be. We thought the man, the louder we pray, the more the presence of God was there. You praying in tongues, you got to pray real loud. I got images of the Holy Ghost on the inside. Can you turn that down a little bit? I'm right here, you know, I'm right here. I ain't, I'm right here. <laughs> Glory be to God. But you know what? It made us feel good, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it felt like we were doing something spiritual. You know, I always thought about it, too. Why, why is it with deep folk? Look at they say, with deep folk, not with you. That when they get a word from the law, it's always got to be, you know, in tongue. Oh, the Lord give me a word for you, sister. Shanda na ba shanda de ba shanda ba. Ni na ma handa na ba chekana. Woo, na yero ba. The word of the Lord to you is. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. If I speak English and you speak English and the Lord know English, how come he just didn't give it to me in English? Because, because that's our part. Over spiritualizing something. Now, I'm not saying you can't prophesy. Now, I ain't got time to teach on that. I mean, there's, there's time where you speak in tongues to, the, to a, a mass of people and the Holy Spirit gives understanding. Then there's other times where you speak in other tongues. That's other languages. And then in foreign countries, you could be, you could be saying something to somebody. You don't know what you're saying, but the Holy Ghost knows what you're saying. And he just directs your tongue. Okay? So I understand all of that, but, but that's not what y'all been doing in church. All right, let's finish. Are you with me here? Yes, sir. All right, so Paul was dealing with this dilemma and this challenge because of the revelation. Everybody say the revelation. So it, where God is moving us is from not just having information about living the grace life to a revelation of how to actually live the grace life. And the apostle Paul here is experiencing that and immediately Satan sends a messenger. Notice what it says. Verse 7, and least I should be exalted above measure. In other words, I'm going uh, through the abundance of the revelation. In other words, the revelation of God promotes. It promotes you. When you get revelation, not when you get information, but when you get a revelation of the information, that's when promotion takes place. That's when you become a threat to the enemy. Are you listening? 
So Paul now got a revelation of, of, of what, what God was telling him. He said, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. And he said, well, what is that thorn? He tell you right here, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. So what does that mean? An opposing message. Paul was being buffeted by Satan's opposing message. That's what caused the trouble. He said a messenger. Well, what is a messenger? Messenger has a message. What is that message that caused him trouble or caused you and I trouble? It's something that's opposite what God said. Just like with Abram and Sarah. God said, you're going to have a child. Uh, Sarah's going to give birth to this child. He's going to be the heir of nations. His name is Isaac. But then the, the messenger of Satan came and said, oh, maybe he wants you to go into Hagar. And they had Ishmael. And they're fighting over that to this day. How many fights? How many battles? How many things you've given birth to? How many Ishmaels have you given birth to? Because you know what God said, but you refuse to do it. Or you're unwilling to remain faithful in doing it. So living a grace life is not about you getting your plan accomplished, but it's you staying focused and rooted and grounded in his plan for you. Amen. So look what God said to him. He said, he, man, he, he went to God three times for this thing. Verse nine. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Look what he said. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. We don't whimper. We don't cry. We don't complain. We don't murmur. Look, the tougher, the, the less resources, the less ability I have manifesting in the natural to produce the plan of God in my life, the better off I am and the better off you are. You said, come on, pastor, that don't make any sense. Well, you don't understand or you don't have a revelation of living the grace life. It's not by my ability, but it's through his power. When you begin to trust God and live the grace life, fear worry and doubt has to take a back seat in your life. Amen? Forever. You ready to live that life? Then just receive it. And then keep meditating on it. Because we've been living the other way a long time, folks. Worried about everything. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going what to do for retirement? You may die at 30 and you worry for nothing. Or you may, live, you may live to be 190. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, that's, that's you. The Bible tells me there are people live to be 400, 500, 600, 800, 900 years. Well, you know, we're running out of natural resources. Let me tell you something. God created the earth, and he created the man in the earth, and he said everything is good and it's finished. He rested the seven days. Let me tell you something. Those people were supposed to still be alive. So how can we run out of resources if nobody was never supposed to die? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you only know part. God know everything. The reason why you're fearful is because you hear and believe the counsel of the world. We're running out of fuel. We're running out of this. We're running out of that. We ain't running out of jack. There are people that don't want us to have access to all that God has put here that, that, that pertains to life and godliness. He said, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness, to live and enjoy. So we're going to get to this life. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's give the Lord some praise. You get anything out of the word today? All right. I have two questions for you. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, I want you to come and join me at the altar. And I believe God will change your life today. Secondly, if God has laid it on your heart to join this church, then man, we're excited about your obedience. Amen. 
You know, God didn't call us or one person to do anything. He called a lot of us to do everything that he wants to accomplish. So if God has laid on your heart to get born again, to join this church, come and join me at the altar. I want everyone else to turn to the person next to you, ask them the same couple of questions, just those two. And if they say, yes, I want to get saved, yes, I want to join the church, then why don't you escort them up here and let's believe God for the harvest. Amen.